And welcome once again to In the Hot Seat with Deborah Fenella. And I'm really excited and blessed to have in the studio today Wendy YCT and Derek Smith from Youth Cancer Trust. And they do amazing work for the actual charity and also organise holidays as well for the youth that are suffering from cancer. So thank you so much for coming into the studio today. Thank Good you. afternoon. Hope thank you made it okay. <laughs> Now then, with regards to the Youth Cancer Trust, um, how did it all start from the very beginning? Well, originally it started in 1987. Um, Brenda Clark, our founder, lost her daughter, Tracy Ann, oh, to cancer at the age of 21. Um, and at that time, um, a youngster came out of a children's ward at the age of 14 and went into a general ward. And so there were no counselling facilities for adolescents or young cancer patients at all. Um, there weren't even at that stage dedicated cancer wards. Wasn't there? Um, so over a period of 10 years, uh, she interviewed a lot of youngsters at Middlesex Hospital to try and find out how she could help those youngsters going this, through this journey of, of diagnosis and treatment and recovery. Um, the biggest thing that came out of it was they want to be normal. Oh, they want to have fun. Which is understandable, isn't it? Because they weren't disabled. Young people just just want to be doing the stuff that the young people are doing. Yeah. Yes. And not feeling, you know, at the end of the day that they're fitting into a particular category um, and being left out, like you say, they just want to act normal, don't they? And be accepted, even mm. though they are diagnosed with a cancer and their disability, they don't want the disability to actually hold them back. Oh. Yeah, and the other thing, nobody wants that label. No, they don't. Um, and emotionally, that affects the youngster. They're going through probably the most traumatic period in their life, which is the journey from being a child to an adult and all the things that go with that. Um, and once the diagnosis is made, life stops. Um, and they may lose two or three years of their teens or longer and they never go yeah. through the normal rites of passage of a youngster that's not diagnosed. Um, sadly, over the last 30 years, teenage diagnosis has increased by 50%. Wow, I mean, that's an awful lot by 50%, isn't there? Because there's lots of different forms of cancer, oh, you know, yeah. within the youngsters. So, I mean, leukemia is obviously, you know, quite a big one that's been going on, obviously, for many years, isn't it? Oh. You, you know, of people being diagnosed with that. Yeah. That's a lot, 50%. But now, adolescent diagnosis has overtaken childhood diagnosis um, because so many um, cancers that are prevalent to, to, to children are now curable. Um, and the, the incidence of leukemia is far less now because we as a, as a nation are more aware of healthy living, life choices and the things to avoid in terms of how to stay well um, throughout childhood I and mean, just the, the, the fascination of exercise and diet. Yes, I mean, diet is Massive. really important. I mean, I remember my mum saying that she saw recently on TV a youngster that was living purely on junk food and he's now become blind. So it's really important. I mean, at schools that they always say to you, you know, obviously have your greens, have your five a day and, you know, be healthy and exercise and everything else. But sometimes it's not always linked with diet. Sometimes it could be maybe genetic, would oh, you say? certainly. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. if it follows in the family sort of like traits as yeah. well. but. So with regards to survival rate, obviously being an adolescent, what percentage would you say that there is? It's around, uh, for young people it's pretty high. We, we were looking yesterday, I mean there's so many statistics out there, Yeah. but it's around like 80% for, wow, for the amazing. survival rate, yeah, it's, it's really okay. high. And um, diagnosis for young people is obviously, um, although it's, it's, it's a growing number as, as Derek was saying, it's still um, a much lower number in young people than people later in their life. So, yes. so what sort of signs would you say for youngsters to tend to sort of look out for um, with regards to their health? 
it could be maybe it's genetic. Genetic. I mean, a lot of it is like anything that's that's unusual and unexpected to going on in the body. Particularly, things to look out for are um, like extreme kind of tiredness, um, uh, any kind of unexplained bleeding, lumps and swellings, changes to a mole. Uh, I mean, I've got a whole list of things here. Yeah. Um, so, if somebody's not healing very well, so they've got a sore that hasn't healed, um, unexpected, um, unexplained weight loss, um, changes in bowel habits, um, bloating, night sweats, so like lot, lots and lots of different symptoms. Um, but we would say to a young person that if you're if you're going into the doctors and you're not getting um, and you're you're getting um, a diagnosis and support but things are not changing they're not improving and you've just got this feeling that something is is just not quite right you're not yes. recovering keep going back and going back because it's really hard to diagnose in young people it looks different it shows up different in the body of a young person than it does in an adult and it and it is hard to diagnose so. so it's really important you know like you say wendy if you're unsure and you don't feel well to go back to your gp yeah. and ask more questions and ask yeah. for more tests to be done as well because obviously the success rate if you catch it earlier it, you know obviously the cure rate is a lot higher rather than leaving it too late because some people you know they're fine to go to the doctors aren't they or they they you know fine to maybe mention it to their, their peers or their parents so it's really important if something's not right, go to your GP, get it checked out, you know, or even if you've got a school nurse, go and see the school nurse. It's really important, isn't it? So with regards to the charity, you do amazing work, don't you? So how did it all begin with both of you, with actually starting with this charity? And what guided you down this path, um, you know, to support the youths that are diagnosed with cancer? Wendy, if I go with you first. Okay. Um, so Thank I've you. been part of the charity, I think, for around seven years now. I started as a volunteer, um, so my previous background is in um, kind of social services and special needs, working with disabled adults and children. Oh, um, and then I got made redundant when I was pregnant. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, but it, you know what? It was it was a great opportunity for me because um, I started volunteering mm -hmm. at the charity. I loved it, and then when it was time to sort of start looking for paid work. The charity just sort of said, "Why don't you stay? Why don't you stay and work for us?" So um, there have been <laughs> ever since, and um, yeah, I love I love being there. It's all, almost yeah. like it was fate, wasn't it? Absolutely. You, you had yeah. to lose your job, and then the, the window opened up for the opportunity, yes. and that's where you're meant to be on a soul level as well. And you do yeah. amazing work. Oh, thank you. And Derek, how about you? How, how did you get involved in the charity? Well, I had a, a thirty-five year career in hospitality, so. Hotels, restaurants, pubs, nightclubs. And in 2000, I decided I wanted to get out. Um, it took me five or six years because it's a whole lifestyle. Yes. Um, and I did some fundraising for the Youth Cancer Trust. Um, and then when I finally said, I'm not doing that anymore, I was asked to come in for just 10 hours a week. Um, that wasn't going to work. <laughs> so I took on the role of fundraising and events um, and it became a full-time job within three months um, and I'm now coming up to 12 years. Wow 12 years that's amazing and also with your experience in hospitality like you say and you know pubs and nightclubs you've got that sort of springboard haven't you uh, which is helping you now to organise the events. Yeah. Oh, it's exciting. Oh. So you've got lots of events coming up, haven't you? But we'll talk about those a little bit later as well. Now, um, also, actually, we've hit on that, haven't we, when it first sort of like begun. So how can you as a charity support like the families of children that have been diagnosed with cancer as well as the actual children as well? So we do, we do get kind of families contact us and, and give us a call. Um, for them, a, a big concern is, you know, this, this child, this young person that they've brought up, they've really cared for and, and worried about, is then being released from the family home into the hands of some a place and people that they've never met before. So for the parents, we, it's giving them a lot of reassurance. We're a really friendly team. <laughs> We're really approachable. You know, and we'll chat to people for hours on the phone just to give them all of the information that they need, um, all of the answers and that. So the holidays are just for the young people um, to get away from the family home and to be with other young people. So we can't um, invite the parents as well, but it does then give the parents time to 
sort of have a break and yes. um, maybe be together as a couple or, or with other siblings. And also the children, the opportunity to be with other sufferers and like mm. you say, also feel normal uh, to the extent that they can do the things that they've been wanted to do and not let the actual disease hold them back as well. So what sort of activities do the children tend to get involved in? <laughs> we, we, we offer um, a menu each week. First of all, we break all the visitors down into three age groups. So that's 14 to 18, mm -hmm. and they're all the school holidays, half terms. Um, then the shoulder periods is 19 to 25. The reason that it's split like that is because at 19 to 25, um, they're adults. Yes, they are. Um, and it's a totally different kind of holiday. Um, the activities are different. Uh, it might not be so high energy. No. Then the third group is the 25 to 30s. Um, and those, sadly, most are brain tumour patients. Oh, and they don't want high energy at all. What they want is to spend time together. Um, and they classically take over the kitchen on a Wednesday afternoon and cook their own meal so oh, that they can say thank you to Brenda um, and John who takes them out on, on activities um, and it's just their little bit of independence for the day. Um, within each group uh, we offer them things like go-karting, horse riding, um, um, Reiki and massage, they can use the, the swimming pool to our neighbour hotel, the Riviera. Um, we have a, a beach hut down on the Chine, um, so we can spend oh, the day down lovely. there. Oh, especially when the weather's nice. I really love um, that. <laughs> oh yeah. So, um, just recently, speed boating. Sounds good fun. Yeah, so they go out on a big rib um, at 40, 50 miles an hour. I bet um, they really love that, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Not historically, <laughs> We had access to a Sunseeker boat for some years, and so the group would go out for a day. Um, they go sailing with the um, Ellen MacArthur Trust. It, well, it's not the Ellen MacArthur Trust, it's Sail for Cancer. Um, and that's on six days in the summer. Um, and they get aboard a 50-footer, and they sail it over to Yarmouth. Off they get, lunchtime, back on, and they help to sail it back. Wonderful opportunity for them yeah. as well, isn't it? And for kids that come from the Midlands, who might never have seen the sea, that's a bit special. Right? It's like um, you're granting their wish there, because you have got the Make-A-Wish campaign, but you're also granting their wishes to do things that they maybe not have the opportunity or even the funds to be able to do it. And uh, I think yeah. it's phenomenal the work that you do. Do a grand job. Well, most of our visitors <laughs> come from that lower end of the socioeconomic spectrum. And if they didn't come on holiday to us, and we pay their transportation as well. Oh, do you? Um, oh. They wouldn't have a holiday. No. And their family wouldn't be able to afford a holiday. Um, and so then we go back to the point that it's so important for the family to have respite. Um, in, not last newsletter, but we, we had twins that visit because they can occasionally bring a brother, sister or, or a friend if they're nervous about going on their own. And the twins, Paris and Paige, came to stay. Now Paris was a cancer patient, fully in recovery now, oh, and Paige good. was the non-cancer patient. Oh. And we interviewed them individually, yes. and Paris told her story, and Paige told the effect on the family, because as twins, they were, um, they were bound together. Yes, because you pick up on each other's emotions, don't you? You know, I mean, I've had lots of surgery myself. Now, I often remember my husband saying to me, it's much to do with them or what to say or, or, you know, what to do. And sometimes, because of that, people don't say anything or sometimes they sort of take a step back. It's like when you've lost somebody, you know, and a lot of people say, I'm sorry to hear that. You know, but again, sometimes they want you, you know, just to be there to hear them, listen to them and to support them and the same with like you say the use with the cancer isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's you. So how many people are actually under your umbrella so to speak that you look after with, with the holidays and given this amazing opportunity within the Cancer Trust at the moment? 
So we can take eight young people a week. Um, oh. So that can be eight patients or a combination of patients and siblings or friends. And um, it's about 250 a year. Yeah. So That's we, a lot, yeah, isn't it? Overall during the year. So we operate Monday to Friday. Um, Brenda, our founder, she lives in the house. Um, upstairs, so she needs a break at the weekends. Yes, she does <laughs> clean and, and she does amazing work for the prepare for the next week. But yeah, it's around two hundred and fifty young people. That's a lot um, of people, year. isn't it? And um, what's the actual name of the hotel that they tend to go to? So it's Tracy Ann House. So um, we it used to be a hotel in Bournemouth. Is it? Yes, it's actually based in Bournemouth. Oh, Bella Vista. Yeah. Right. Based in Bournemouth. Yeah. And but it's called Tracy Ann House because. Brenda's daughter was Tracy Ann. Oh, bless her. Um, and it's lovely to, to run it in the memory of her daughter as well. So we're in our 22nd song. year now. Are you 22 years? Yeah. That's amazing. Um, I say I've not actually heard of yourselves until you popped up on Facebook and I saw all the amazing events that you're doing. I thought I've got to interview you guys, yeah. you know, to, to get the message out there, you, you know, for more people to come and support your charity. But also there's a lot of people that are suffering from cancer that don't even know anything about you. So hopefully, you know, some of our listeners, if you've got any children that are going through cancer, you know, or even out up to the age of 25, you know, please get in touch. We will actually share the links on social media, you know, for you to contact Derek or Wendy or Brenda, um, you know, and have the amazing opportunity to be able to convalesce and have a little holiday as well, which is really important, isn't it? And it's for all over the United Kingdom. Isn't so it? it's it's England, Wales, Scotland, Ireland, and even the Channel Islands. So what's the furthest that someone's actually travelled to come and have a holiday in Bournemouth? Because Bournemouth is beautiful. We're really blessed with amazing beaches, aren't we? Yeah. I guess the groups that come from Scotland. Yeah. Scotland? Mm. Gosh, yeah. I mean, that's quite a long way. I mean, I've got a lovely friend, Anthony James Mattox, and he suffers from trigeminal neuralgia, and he lives in um, Edinburgh. Mm. I think I've that's all right. I suspect he's watching. <laughs> yeah. But he does amazing work and he does all of our videos. I'm sure he will, you know, edit some videos and he will share it as well, sort of like globally for you. Mm -hmm. So how can people actually get in contact with yourselves, um, you know, to find out more information about support or, you know, how they can come and have a holiday? How can they get in contact with you guys? So our website is www.youthcancertrust.org. So you can contact our website, it's got all of the information on there, our phone number, email addresses, um, Facebook us, like anything. We, uh, young people don't need to be referred to us, they can refer themselves oh, and good. just get in touch any way that you feel comfortable and um, chat to a member of the team. And, and what sort of times a day are people available, you know, to sort of have a chat with you? Because, Obviously it's not 25 um, states, you'll need the rest as well. <laughs> uh, no, we, um, a lot of our staff are part-time, we're a really small team, so um, if, if somebody's not in the office to answer a call or you know, leave a message and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Um, Brenda's always in the house, but um, the other staff are sort of, we're all in and out and all over the place. <laughs> so, so what do your families think about the amazing work that you're doing for the charity? You first. <laughs> <laughs> Be on the spot now. Um, they are so proud of you. Thank you. Um, yeah, um, my family support me. They come to events. They volunteer. My brother and his wife volunteer a lot. Oh. Um, my little boy, he's just turned eight, and he comes and gives out leaflets and wears a little volunteer badge and joins in and oh, runs so and watches lovely. the shows and stuff. So yeah, it's really nice to um, to tell people about what I do, and and people are really interested. And um, some of my friends and I, I've not been doing the hard sell, you know, can you support us? But some of my <laughs> friends, they know what I do and then they'll just, it'll be a birthday or some friends got married recently, they donated, um, instead of getting presents, they donated money to us. Um, people do fundraising events for us. So it's been, I think when you're so passionate about what you do and you really love what you do and believe in it, that just kind of naturally spills over and it people want to help because they, they feel it too. So. so do you have um, also like an open day where people come up, you know, and look around and you have different sort of like activities? Have you thought about doing something like that? Or maybe have the fire engine there with more fire service? <laughs> I, I <laughs> so love the idea. Painting <laughs> and stores and like that. And I love that like that. Mm -hmm. We so had an, uh, an open day. Um, a family fun day, you could call yeah. it. Some, the house <laughs> is quite small. Um, yeah. And because we're in Ellen Chine, the garden is is stepped. Oh, is it? Oh, so it's not yeah. very big. We could do it maybe at Wimbledon Town Football Club. I'll have a chat with Clive for you. Cool, that'd be excellent. You've got a massive big, you know, field there. We can have lots of activities. Cool. We'll do that. So what do your family think about it, Derek? They, 
obviously there was a difference between the life I had as, as in hospitality and, and this, but they still understand that if I'm out on the weekends, then it's an event then I would attend and yes. support. If I go out in evenings to give talks or presentations um, and just, I have to involve myself with, with the larger community, certainly in the, the Bournemouth and the, the two counties of Hampshire and Dorset, um, because only, I guess, less than 10% of the population of BH have heard of us. So the, the people in Bournemouth um, don't know we're there. No. The youngsters that are being treated for cancer in Dorset, Hampshire, Wiltshire, West Sussex, they don't know where we are either. So unless we can get them onto our website, it's done by word of mouth. Yes. Um, fortunately now, social media makes it so much so much easier. It is a fantastic way, as I say, to bring awareness globally, really, isn't it? Not mm. just in your local area. Globally. But the youngsters now book their holiday on Facebook. Oh, do they? So we've got good, a dedicated, they? <laughs> dedicated Facebook page where they can they can communicate with with our admin team and book their holiday, order a, a, the, the the questionnaire which gives us background information about what sort of cancer, what sort of medication, um, whether they've got dietary issues or mobility issues, um, and once we've got all that background information, um, then we can start to plot how they fit into the groups for those that we already know have visited before. Yes. Yeah. Um, because it's that bonding, that peer group support, which is the, the ethos of the activity. Um, I mean, it's great fun to go go-karting, but if it's competitive with other youngsters that fully understand what's going on, that changes the whole thing. It certainly does, yeah. doesn't it? Um, it's, I suppose over the years I've met millions and millions of people, but none of them stack up against the strength and the resilience of these teenagers. No, um, they're very resilient, aren't they? And they're very strong. We can learn an awful lot from teenagers, yeah, yeah. aren't we? Mm -hmm. it, um, sadly, I mean, when I started with the charity, um, stats said that maybe one in three and a half people will get cancer. Now it's down I mean, to one in two. Mm, really? Gosh, one really in two high, of the population. That? And so we know that our job is not going to go away. No. Much as we'd love it to. It's not going to. I mean, eventually they will find a cure. I mean, nowadays they do advertise CBD oil, don't they? I mean, I've got a friend who's actually going through prostate cancer at the moment. Mm. And eventually, maybe in time, they will actually legalise um, cannabis, but the sort of pure oil form, because it is meant to be really good. And in some cases, that has actually healed cancer patients, isn't it? Mm. So, it, it, you know, we hope that one day there will be a, a cure for cancer. Mm. And the other thing is that, that the, the joy that they get from just being away. Mm. And having it, fun as well, it's so important, isn't absolutely. it? You know, to laugh, have fun, it, you know, and enjoy having that social gathering time together, isn't it? And also go out their wishes sometimes that they don't have the opportunity, like I said earlier, you, you know, to try something completely different. If you've never been on a horse, say, for instance, mm. to get on a horse and go horse riding, you, you know, or even sit on a fire engine, say, for instance. It doesn't matter what it is, mm. doesn't it? And we know that, and we say that, Positive mental attitude won't cure cancer. No. But what it will do is produce the endorphins that support the yes. immune system. And so yeah. that helps. It certainly does. Uh, so in terms of its it. recovery potential, that positive mental attitude is critical. Yes. Um, because it's being in hope, isn't it, as well, yeah. that they, you know, they will find like a cure. But they do use a lot of Reiki healing now in hospitals. And there was a, a lady who started at Paul Hospital many years ago. And they also do Reiki healing in Bournemouth Hospital too. But also up and down the country, that there's actually Reiki healing available for cancer patients because it does promote peace of mind, body and spirit. And like you said earlier, you do have sometimes people coming in to do Reiki therapy and massage on them. And again, that can also help them just to find that peace within, can't it? And given you know sort of like the strength to fight the cancer because it does start in the head there's no you know the determination to to actually fight it and in some cases it, it can help can't it yeah. which is really good so how can people actually get involved whether they want to volunteer with the charity or sort of like 
donate, you know, um, maybe presents for Christmas time for everybody, um, you know, or actually get involved in fundraising themselves. How can they sort of, you know, help you as a charity? Well, all of us at the charity have um, on our website um, a link connection. So um, a message to either our Facebook page or our website will produce a response um, and we now have, I think, five Facebook pages. Five? Um, well, that's good. Mind you, you've got lots of events coming up soon. Quite a few, don't you? Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, and so for people, um, once they get in touch, then I will, I will ask them how I can help them help us. And first of all, they have to have an idea. And once we've got the idea, then we can put the nuts and bolts around it to help them, whether it be for fundraising or an awareness event, because that's as as important as the cash. Yes. Um, yeah. I mean, our, our job is not all about money. No. Um, it's about bringing people together as well, isn't yeah. it? Like you're saying, supporting yeah. within the community. Um, and I tend to talk to a lot of groups of an older generation, and those are in many cases grandparents, possibly great-grandparents um, and we do have, we don't rely on but we've seen an increase in revenue from legacies over the last five years um, without going into figures um, and we were left a house three years ago. Really? In That's Bournemouth. fantastic. <laughs> wow. I mean can people actually donate to charity like monthly so you've got a regular income coming in? Yeah, we've got some friends of YCT and they, they provide monthly or annual um, donations. Okay. So it all helps, doesn't um, it? It doesn't matter how big or small, every yeah. donation does really help. Absolutely. But also on the subject of volunteering, we really need some volunteers at the Do moment. Okay. We've got some events <laughs> coming up, so if you want to come and help us out, please get in touch. Um, we can tell you more about the events we've got coming up. That would be fantastic. So talking about the events, I think all of our listeners would love to hear what's coming up in Bournemouth. Okay. <laughs> um, so in two weeks time we've got our Dance Beat Beats Cancer show, so um, this is now in its third year, so um, so a few, a few years back we had the idea of doing an awareness campaign, we thought we'd do like a small flash mob, <laughs> and um, well that idea just kind of escalated massively, we um, started working with um, Fraser Bennett and, um, and, and a, this team of wonderful, creative, amazing people. So our small flash mob ended up as being a piece of dance for film and, um, and we released that at a launch night show, which is now so popular that it's now an annual dance event. And the film itself, we entered that into the Charity Film Awards, where this year we won a silver award. Did you? Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Amazing. Amazing. Yes. Yes. By Sir David Attenborough. Yeah, really? By David Attenborough. Wow. Yeah. Second him. <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. And you've also, Derek, got a boxing event coming up, haven't you? Because I've got a friend who actually teaches boxing, and he's, he's got a gym in Bournemouth called Mark Smith. Uh -huh. So I can maybe get him you know to maybe support you or help out if you need any extra help i'll get his details off you. i'll give you his <laughs> details so if you're watching mark um wendy and derek really would love you to help out you know and he does teach youngsters boxing as well as adults but to build their confidence and their self-esteem he, he does workshops and that so i should link you up with him so tell all our listeners a little bit about the boxing amateur boxing event coming up um well uh, there's quite a big charity boxing scene in bournemouth um, and I was approached by a lady um, called Stella Payne from uh, Priory Number no. 6, which is a, a beauty salon in Christchurch. And she said, I'd like to do something for you, your charity and your youngsters. So first of all, she invites a group, say this week we have a group, all girls, and tomorrow afternoon they're going for a pamper afternoon. Oh, so that'd be really nice. Hair, nails, makeup. <laughs> it's one extreme, so you'll do a bit of boxing, yeah. and the next minute have a bit of curly tongue. <laughs> yeah. um, and Stella had the idea of, why don't we have a charity boxing night? So I found a, a friendly venue. Um, so it's, we're gonna, it's gonna take place at the Royal Bath Hotel. Fantastic. Um, and then we're now networking with the gyms and the boxing clubs. Um, and we're hoping to have 180 people there that night. That'd be brilliant. Um, and 10 bouts. Um, and what date is that on, Derek? 26th of October. 26th. Because I've actually interviewed 
um, a big heavyweight champion, Joe Egan. Oh. And he does support a lot of children's charities, so I, I um, will get in contact with him and send him an email to see if he maybe you know is free to come down or support one of your events. Yeah. Yeah. And he's also really good friends with Mark Smith. Cool. Oh. So that will really help. Yeah. So before the boxing night, we've got the um, Bournemouth Marathon Festival. Um, so we occasionally have runners in there, but but we host one of the hydration stations each year. Um, and hand out four or five thousand bottles of water. Wow, in the it's course got of bottles of water. Do people uh, obviously donate them, don't they? Uh, they're, yeah. they're provided by by the the, the management of, of the, the event. Oh, that's good. Um, but our next one after that will be our Christmas party. Yes, I've seen that actually. It's the Havana Christmas party, I believe. Yeah. That looks lots of fun actually. I might try yeah. and um, make that with Tracy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's going to be Cuban night. It's going to be really good fun. Cuban night. Ooh. What date was that one on? That's on Friday the 20th of December. 20th. So it's the last Friday. Actually, I'm just back Christmas. from holiday then, so um, I should be able to come. Be good fun. And um, there'll be lots of salsa fun going on there. Um, and. I yesterday ordered the, the table favours, I'm not going to tell you what they are. No, it's exciting. Um, How much is tickets for the event? The tickets will be £50, I think. £50 per head, but if you book a table of 10, then you get, get discount. four fifty. And what's the £50 include? A free course meal? Oh yeah, definitely. Yes. And entertainment. So we've got um, probably one of the leading salsa DJs in the whole country coming up from Ooh. Bristol. So everyone can dress up in sort of like salsa outfits. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, Wendy can tell you more about, but he's going to do a lot of the animations. Is he? Um, and if Sounds that makes fun. any sense. Yes. Um. <laughs> Party dancers, we have one going. And, yeah. Um, we got performance and um, local performers. Um, yeah, so it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be lots of fun. And getting back to the Glitz and Glam, when is that event meant to be? On the Glitz and Glam? Glitz and Glam. The Charleston um, event that you've got coming up. Oh, that was a previous event. The oh, was that a previous event? event? Yeah, oh, right. It was okay. a couple of years ago, and that oh, was, was um, really successful. Yeah, we was teamed it? up with um, Jack from Kings Beach uh, Residents, and he was involved in that one. And then he's come back for the Cuban one, and he is just such this beautiful, vibrant kind of personality. He really manages to get everyone going and brings a lot of people in. So mm. we love that kind of energy. It's so great. you might end up doing another event or a little bit similar to that later on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was really popular, that one. Was it? I can imagine, because people do yeah. like, you know, dressing up, don't they? Yeah. You know, you could do, say, for instance, a Hollywood actor, yeah. um, you know, or, or faint celebrity, you know, famous yeah. celebrity party Same or something same. like that, couldn't you? Yeah. Well, we all have yeah. two events streamed for next spring um, one will be an art auction and we've been donated um, some serious pieces of art that oh. that market for between 10 and 20 thousand pounds wow um, so we'll hold a live auction at the Hilton that night but it will be streamed internationally yes, on the internet globally. Um, we're also gonna have a circus inspired spring party spring ball um, that's, that sounds fun. So that's gonna the nuts and bolts <laughs> of that are gonna be tightened up over the over the Christmas period. So is um, it gonna be a bit like the movie Shaman? Something like that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we're, still, we're still coming up with the details, but yeah, something a bit like that. Like, so you um, want different acts like jugglers and things like that. I might be able to help you there because I know a lot of people. Yeah. Getting back to your art events, um, my friend Shaney Hagen, she's an actress on Emmerdale. She's an artist as well. So if you want a celebrity to come down for your art thing, and um, I'm sure she's watching Subtacta to her in Emmerdale, might be watching. Cool. Um, Shani, if you'd like to get involved and give you a little bit more details, and you can come down, you know, to Dorset next year. What do you think? Strangely, last week, <laughs> one of the youngsters that visited came to ask me, he said, I'd like to do a skydive. I said, well, where do you live? It's very brave. <laughs> he said, I live in Leeds. Yes, uh, I said, well, the nearest is Brilliant. What, what do you do for your job? Maybe you get it sponsored. He said, I work at Emmerdale. Mm. Oh, really? He, he's on the, the tour guide crew um, for both the village and the studios. Oh, and so see. he's going to try and get his company to sponsor that activity and maybe get a group together to do a group skydive. That'd be fantastic. That'd be awesome. Well, Shelley, if you're listening and also at Emmerdale, you know, love to get you involved and um, jump up was bit support. I'm not sure if um, Shani would be brave enough to jump out of an airplane, but you never know, I'm sure she might give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> we 
but she also um she done a, a beautiful picture and she sent it off to the queen she got a letter from buckingham palace Oops, sorry my cat's just jumped <laughs> on derek's lap sorry about that <laughs> this is the cat by the way <laughs> i think she wanted to get involved in the um you know interview bless her so thank you so much for coming in today and um, once again if you can give all of our listeners the, the details of the website and the Facebook pages on social media to look out for and um, also we will be sharing it on social media as well so don't worry if you, you don't um, hear it you can contact me or Wendy or Derek and I, I will sort of guide you in the right direction but also if you'd like to do an event yourself to raise money for youth um, at Cancer Trust be truly appreciative, um, you know, support the charity or even got time to volunteer, you know, please do get in touch. So the website details is Wendy. It's youthcancertrust.org and Facebook is Youth Cancer Trust as well. So thank you. And are you also on like LinkedIn and Twitter and Instagram? I know you're on Instagram, as Derek said. <laughs> yeah, we've got an uh, Instagram and our own YouTube channel. Oh yes, you've got your YouTube channel. So the Youth Sorry. Cancer Trust YouTube channel. Um, and that's where you'll find the, the Dance Beats Cancer film the prize winning film um, and the other films that we've produced over recent years uh, one is currently in, in editing at the moment where uh, a film crew interview the youngsters throughout the week of their holiday um, at their activities and ask them about them their background and their treatment and the effects um, and it's amazing how honest these youngsters are when they're in front of a, a camera. Yes, that's one. I can imagine it's quite emotional as well listening to their Very stories, well. isn't it? That's a shame. <laughs> that's all of the fuss and the attention. <laughs> well, thank you both so much for coming in today and thank each and every one of you as well for watching. And, you know, once again, if you'd love to get involved and support Youth Cancer Trust, you can contact myself um, also via In the Hot Seat with Deborah Fenella page and I can pass on to the details but also the details about coming events as well if you'd like to volunteer because as I say, Wendy and Derek do need some volunteers for the upcoming events, please get in touch as well. So thank you so much both of you and you. Um, Trace and I and the rest of the In The Hot Seat team look forward to getting involved and supporting you, you know, with the charity and doing a bit of volunteering ourselves. Thank you. <laughs> as well, thank, thank you. you so much. You. Bye for now. In the hot seat of Deborah Fennell, a TV show.